Okay, this example one will be about using Bosawat's law to calculate the magnetic field at the center of a ring. Okay, so suppose that there is a ring containing a current, so it, it would be uh, similar to this tangent galvanometer, where you have um, the current flowing in the ring and it will generate a magnetic field in the direction according to this right hand rule. Okay, so from this Bill Sabat's law, okay, so um, we are going to define the three terms. Okay, so for the DL, DL is the displacement along the current. Okay, so I am going to define a vector, a vector DL here. So, so that um, it is a, a part of this circle. Okay, so if I if I pick up this point as a source. Okay, let's say the Let's say that uh, this is a source where, where we have the current here and then, and then this vector dl that the current is traveling. Okay. And then r, so r is the distance from source to p. Okay, so I'm just, um, I'm just trying to measure the distance from uh, this, this vector to p or to this point. Okay. So I just draw a green line along here. So that will be the distance from source to P. And, and we found that this distance from source to P is the distance R, or is the radius of the circle. Okay? And then the vector R, the unit vector R, it is the direction from source to P. Okay? So I'm going to draw a unit vector that pointing from source to p okay so the vector will will just look like this so it would be a vector that pointing from from the circumference um, back to the center okay so i call this vector the r hat or the unit vector r okay and then um with the cross product between dl and r we are going to we are going to determine the direction of the magnetic field so so dl, let's say that dl is my index finger here. And let's say that r is um, my middle finger here. And doing the cross product, we'll doing the cross product of dl cross r. Okay, will we'll give me the direction of the magnetic field that is pointing outside okay so magnetic field is pointing out from the screen okay so then let's try to work out this integral okay so for DL I will say that um, D DL has a, has a magnitude equals to DS, okay, in which S is the distance along the curve. So, so that if I try to find the magnitude of dl cross unit vector r, so it would be the magnitude of dl times by the magnitude of unit vector r and times by sine theta. Okay, so in which theta is that is the angle that is made between dl. which is in up direction in this picture, and R, which is going to the left-hand side in this picture. So that uh, we have theta equal to 90 degree and sine theta equal to one. Okay, and, and that um, the size of the unit vector is equal to one. So, so that DL cross R, uh, we will have the magnitude 
of just the ds. Okay, so so that's um, in this integral, uh, we just come up with b equals to this constant, and I I just bring i out of the integral as it's also a constant, and then it would be um, so dl cross r here will be just the ds. And, and for r square, it would be r square. Okay, and then, and then for this integral, we we are going to perform this integral along the circle, or we call this the loop integral. Okay, so then, um, I'll just do further simplification. I bring mu zero i over 4 pi and I'll bring r square out okay and the integration along the loop or along the circle um, it would be just the circumference of the circle or 2 pi r okay or if you want to do this in the full version okay um, I'll just try doing integrate of ds uh, which is equals to integrate of r d phi. Okay, so so r d phi here. So if phi d phi here is the change, small change in the angle, and then um, r times by d phi, it will be the ds or it will be the length of the curve. Or I would say it is the arc length. Okay, so you integrate r d phi and from phi equals to zero to two pi. Okay, and if r is constant and you just come up with two pi r, so it's the same thing as I mentioned. So uh, loop integral of ds will be just the circumference of the whole circle, which is two pi r. Okay, so then um, we simplify a little bit more of this equation so I cancel r with r and cancel 2 with 4 okay and finally um, the you get and uh, the magnitude of the magnetic field as mu 0 i and the pi pi also cancel with pi so it's mu 0 i over 2 r okay so this is the same thing as the equation has given you so it has been proved that b is mu i over 2r and it is in the outward direction. Okay, and that you can use this to, to, um, <coughs> to explain, um, to, sorry, to calculate the magnetic field of this tangent galvanometer. So if you consider this tangent, Galvanometer. Okay. In which I, um, you might need to times this with n or the number of turns. Okay. So it is the proof that um, the magnetic field of this tangent galvanometer. It will it will be it will have the magnitude of mu so i will become n i and divided by two r at the center. <laughs>